Single speed bikes are great. They're lightweight, affordable, and require very little maintenance. There's just something fun and freeing about riding a full steel single speed bike with rim brakes that a modern carbon road bike with disc brakes just can't replicate. The single speed bikes do come with disadvantages. The main disadvantage being when you start to ride the bicycle uphill. So today we're gonna to discuss how to climb hills on a single speed bicycle. Let's get right into it. All right, so this largely pertains to bicycles, single speed bicycles that you can coast on. We're not talking about fixed gear bicycles here. Those are a totally different animal. We will mention a few things about fixed gear bicycles since both bicycles, single speed coasting bicycles and single speed bicycles with a fixed cog in the back, they are both single speed bikes and a lot of these techniques can actually apply to both. But really when it comes to coasting, going downhill, going fast, that's where fixed gears and single speeds are totally different. So we will discuss that throughout the video as well. So first we're gonna talk about gearing. The gear ratio that you choose is really going to dictate how hard or how easy it is for you to ride that bike up the hill. It's also going to dictate how hard or easy it is going to be to accelerate or how much top end speed you have. And what you do is you take the number of teeth on the front chain ring and divide it by the number of teeth on the back chain ring. Now generally a good gear is going to be 2.5 to 1. This is a great all around gear ratio. You're gonna be able to accelerate relatively quickly. You're gonna have decent top end speed. You're gonna be able to get up most hills without feeling like you're struggling. It's kind of the best all around gear ratio for riding in an urban environment where maybe you got some hills and flats as well. Now this bike actually has 46 by 18. This is my Wabi Classic. That would mean that this bike has a 2.55 to one gear ratio. Now my other Wabi, my Wabi Thunder, which is a turquoise color, has a 44 in the front and a 17 in the back, which would give me 2.58 to one as a gear ratio. So both of them pretty similar gear ratios. The Thunder is a little bit higher. We're talking 0 0.03 of a number higher. Now this number does change slightly as well if you're running big fat tires like 38, 40 millimeter tires. Also, if you're running 25 or 23s, if anyone's out there still running 23 millimeter tires, this number will change. This is assuming, or I'm assuming that you're running anywhere between a 25 and a 32 millimeter tire. Most people on the road are running 28s to 32s. This bike currently has 28s and my Wabi Thunder currently right now has 28s as well. So we'll keep that constant. If you feel that your bike gear ratio is too high, you're struggling on the hills, you're struggling to start out at stoplights and you just want a little bit better acceleration, what you wanna do is you wanna get a smaller chain ring and or a bigger freewheel cog in the back. This is going to make acceleration a lot easier, especially going uphill but you will lose a bit of top end speed. Now increasing the size of the freewheel on this bike by one tooth would give us a ratio of 2.42 to one because we went from a 46.18 to a 46.19. This is gonna be a good year ratio if you're just started out for cycling, you're brand new, you wanna get a single speed because they're lightweight, affordable, cheap, easy to maintain. And this ratio, you're still gonna have decent top end speed. I was able to hit 20 miles an hour on this bike with this gear ratio, no problem. Although it was kind of spinny, the nice thing about a single speed bicycle is that when you're going faster than 20 miles an hour, you can just stop pedaling and coast and you're okay. So it gets a lot trickier with a fixed gear bicycle because you need to have a gear that's going to get you accelerating and up the hill easily, but also not a gear that is so low that you're gonna be spinning like crazy once you hit about 15 miles an hour or bombing down a hill. Now the lowest gear that I've actually tried in a single speed bike would be 44 by 19, which will give us 2.31 to one as a gear ratio. Now this is the gear ratio that I tried on my Wabi Thunder with 38 millimeter tires. It was a ton of fun, especially on gravel. You can have some pretty steep hills and there's a lot of resistance in the tire since you are off road. So while this was a great gear ratio, it is quite low for riding around. And anytime I did take this gear ratio and ride around town, do a late night training ride, it was a lot more of a chill ride. I didn't really get faster than 13 or 14 miles an hour. You can probably hit 20 miles an hour. I think I did hit 20 miles an hour a couple times, but it was pretty tough. You gotta to spin pretty crazy to get to 20 miles an hour. This is a good ratio, but I would only choose this. This is only good for those specific 
specific situations, it's not great for if you want to cover more ground or if you actually want to go out there and do some 30 or 40 mile rides with your single speed bicycle. So for gearing, you're going to want to choose a gear that you can get up the hills, but not something that makes the hills super easy. I will be honest, when I'm riding this gearing, the 4618, I barely have to stand up anymore for the hills just in my area. So I am tempted to throw on a 17 tooth cog instead of an 18 tooth cog or freewheel rather in the back going from a 4618 to a 4617. I had the 4617 and I really enjoyed it, but just because I've been getting back into cycling the past few months, the 4618 is a bit friendlier for me. So it does work right now, but for my local terrain, it is a bit easier for me. I don't find I have to stand up as much. But if I continue to ride over the Queensboro Bridge or the Williamsburg Bridge into Manhattan, this is where the 4618 is actually going to aid me because those are some bigger, hillier bridges that I normally don't ride over all the time. And this is going to give me more flexibility. I can ride more hills than what I just have in my local area here in Queens. So if you're finding that you're standing up on any hill, even if it's a tiny hill, you might want to gear down to an easier ratio. But if you're finding that you don't have to stand up at all anymore, you can just kind of sit down and chill and just sail up those hills. No problem. Maybe it might be time to actually go up one tooth at a time just so that you can cover more ground a little bit easier. That's usually a sign that you're actually getting stronger and you're able to cover more ground since you're just overall in better shape. If you're still not sure what gear ratio to choose, I would always say go with slightly lower than you think you need, slightly easier of a gear ratio. Since as long as you're riding a single speed bicycle, once you get up to speed and you feel like you're spinning out, you can just go ahead and coast and it's going to be a lot more fun than if you're constantly muscling up every single hill in your neighborhood. Now, if you're riding a fixed gear bike, then you are going to want to do a little bit more experimentation with this. Just make sure you choose something that's not too hard to get up hills, not too hard to start off at stoplights, but also not something that has you spinning out like crazy once you reach 15 miles an hour. Now we're going to talk about some of the techniques that you should be using when you're riding these bicycles uphill. What you're going to want to do is find two types of hills out in your neighborhood. The first hill should be a very gradual incline over time. Think like a 2% gradient, so very slow but longer hill. And the second type of hill is going to be a little bit of a steeper hill but a faster hill. You don't want to go out and just ride long steep climbs. That's going to be very hard, especially if you're new to single speed cycling. Now you're going to have to get up and climb out of the saddle. Standing up and pushing down the pedals with your entire body weight is going to be a lot easier going uphill when you only have one gear. Remember, you can't just click a downshift with the levers. You don't have shift levers, you have brake levers. Standing up is going to be a lot easier when getting up the hill. Now, standing up. You don't want your hands to be right here. You want your hands to be on the hoods. This is going to make it a lot easier to swing the bike back and forth. So as you push down with your right foot, you're going to swing the bike to the left to create more leverage. And when you push down with your left foot, you're going to swing the bike to the right to create more leverage. And as you start to ride more and steeper, longer hills, you're going to feel that it's really going to be a workout for your arms and really for your, for your full body where you're going to be pushing and pulling the bike this way and that way the steeper the hill gets. Now, if you're in good shape and you have a low gear ratio, you probably can remain seated. I've done it before and I just put my hands right here. But mind you, that's going to drain your legs a little bit faster. You're, you're going to use more of your leg strength than anything else and your leg is going to be fatigued a lot earlier. Whereas if you use your full body, it's going to be a lot easier to muscle up those hills. But there's a couple of caveats here. Using just your legs means that your legs are going to get tired faster, but overall you're going to have a lot more energy. Your heart rate isn't going to go as high. But when standing up and wrenching the bike back and forth, while it's going to save your legs, you're going to use more energy overall and you're going to have to refuel and rehydrate a lot faster and your heart rate is going to go a lot higher. For anyone out there that actually exercises and tries to stay in zone two, this is where standing up and climbing on a single speed bicycle is going to take you way past zone two. You're going to go anaerobic, I think is the term. It's not going to be as aerobic as just sitting down and spinning up a hill on a geared bicycle. Now, at first, it's going to be very hard to get up hills on your single speed bike. But you'd be amazed that just in a few weeks or just in a handful of rides, it's going to get easier and easier. And you may just find that when you go back to your geared road bike, you actually start to forget to downshift. 
which has happened to me multiple times. Now, which handlebars should you choose? This is really up to you, but I am most comfortable choosing the road drops with the road levers or the compact drop bars with the drop bar levers. These are going to give you a lot of hand positions and you're going to just be overall more comfortable. And these are the most versatile handlebars for riding on the road. You have the tops, the hoods and the drops and the brake levers are easy to grab from the drops and they're not that bad to grab from the hoods either. The reason I like these handlebars so much is like we were just saying, when you're standing up, you got to wrench the bike back and forth going uphill. It is a lot harder to do that for me with a pair of riser bars or just straight bars versus like this, because what you're basically doing with these bars now, you're pushing the bike back like this, which is a more natural position. It just gives you more leverage than if you're like this and you're trying to push the bike like that. You have your arms rotated 90 degrees inward, which is gonna basically put more twisting pressure and put more stress on your entire body, your entire upper body. So compact road drops are going to be your best option for 99% of the road riding that you're doing. Now let's talk about what pedals and shoes you should use when riding your bicycle. Now the first option is going to be the simplest and easiest, just a basic pair of sneakers and a basic pair of platform pedals. My particular favorite sneaker to ride bikes in is going to be the Vans Old Schools or the Vans Slip-On or really any of the Vans. Reason being, this has superb Grip. This grips amazingly well on the pedals that I'm using right now, which are just a pair of Fixation Gates Mesa pedals. Again, link below if anyone wants to check them out. These things are absolutely great. Sometimes they do get a little bit cushy on the bottom, but I've ridden this bicycle 40 miles in a pair of these vans. No problem at all. I never felt like I wanted anything better. So these are going to be your most basic, easiest options for just getting out there and having fun on your bike. Now, other options include other sneakers like this. This is the Adidas Ultra Boost in this beautiful navy blue and white colorway. This is going to be a little bit weirder just because there's a bit more bounce in the soles. So you're not going to feel like you have as good power transfer. It's going to just feel like when you're pushing the pedals or you're, when you're climbing uphill especially, it's going to be flexing a little bit. But I can honestly say that after the first few pedal strokes, your body's going to get used to it and these are no problem at all. So you don't have to go out and get a pair of Vans or spend more money if you don't want to. If you have something like this, this is totally going to work as well. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it has some sort of a flat type sole like this. See, this doesn't have a whole lot of tread on the bottom and these grip the pedals just as well. For pedals, I just have these Fixation Gates Meta Mesa platform pedals. They're sealed bearings. I think they were $60. Super amazing pedals, my absolutely favorite flat pedals. They have these nice big pins right here so that your feet stay locked in. Overall, best pedals on the market. Lightweight, cheap, durable. What more could you ask for? Now, of course, you can go with an SPD mountain bike style shoe and pedal like this. This is gonna be a great option if you absolutely wanna have that foot retention, you wanna have that power transfer, you want that stiff soled shoe. That way, you know, you're riding for long periods of time. You're not gonna get any sort of hot spots on the bottom, but you also don't wanna be wearing your plastic cleats out. You want your metal cleats to last a long time. This is where this is really going to excel. And especially for a fixed gear bicycle, it's really important to have that type of foot retention since your feet just stay locked into the pedals. And these are still extremely easy to clip in and out of since the pedals are double-sided. Now the highest performing option is going to be the road style pedal. This is a Shimano SPD SL. By far, these are the most comfortable and these are the most stiff. Feels like your foot is part of the pedals that I've ever tried. The SPD SLs, in, even in the yellows right here, these things are absolutely amazing. So if you just want pure performance and you want to feel like you're one with the bicycle and one with the pedals, this is the system you should go for. Now, it's not like they wear out after 10 minutes of walking, but if you do have to walk a mile or two in these, I would probably say that these are gonna be pretty cooked after that. You can actually get some nice cleat covers. I'll link them below on Amazon. They look like that. And these are really awesome just to throw in your pocket. That way, if you do have to walk for a long time, just slip them on and you're good to go. It's a bit weird walking in these. It kind of feels like you're in reverse high heels because it pitches your foot back like that. But you do get used to it pretty fast. Another thing to keep in mind with these is since the pedal sits like this 
and it's a one-sided pedal, you're going to have to really make sure you aim and clip in. It's very easy to miss the pedal and then you'll be on the underside of the pedal and you'll have to flip it around. This has happened to me multiple times. It's taken me three or four tries of getting into my pedal when riding around the streets of New York. So just keep this in mind. If you're clipping and unclipping a whole lot, you are going to have to want to practice this quite a bit. I had a couple of two hour rides last summer where I got in every single time and it was amazing but it's kind of frustrating where you're struggling to get them in two or three times. You ride for a few seconds, you come up to a stoplight, you unclip, and then you struggle again. That's where these can really fall short. Now, a lot of people like to wear toe clips and straps, or they like to wear, what are they, what are they called? I forgot what they're called. I, I totally forgot what they're called. Just the wide straps, the pedal straps. Those are great. They're going to give you amazing foot retention, especially if you're riding fixed gear. But every time I've tried them, it was incredibly hard to get in them. And then I actually fell over the most when I was using those. And they're just more trouble than they're worth. If you want good foot retention and you want performance, just go with something like the SPD, the mountain bike system, or the road pedal, the SPD SL. These are going to give you all of the benefits of the foot retention, but also it's going to be a lot easier to get out of both of these. Just twist your foot, you pop right out of them, no problem at all. Those foot straps and the toe clips and straps, they're kind of the worst of both worlds. You have a flimsy sneaker that you're riding in, it's hard to get into, it's hard to get out of, and you don't really get a, as much power transfer, maybe a little bit on the upstroke. But overall, I did not like foot straps or toe clips and straps at all. If you're riding a single speed bike, you really don't need foot retention as much as you think you do since you have your brakes to slow down. If you are riding a fixed gear bike, you might need it. I would, again, I would always say don't ride brakeless fixed gear bicycles. It's just not safe to do anywhere unless you're, that's not safe to do anywhere. And if you have a front and rear brake, not just a front brake, a front brake and a rear brake, you can get by with no foot retention. I've done it before. If your feet slip off the pedals and your pedals are going like crazy, all you gotta do is grab both your brakes and you're good to go. So you might be asking, why not just get a proper geared bike? That way you don't have to think about this so much. Well, geared bikes do have a lot of advantages and if you truly wanna just go out there and be able to tackle any terrain, hilly, flat, whatever, absolutely, geared bikes are going to be a lot more versatile and a lot more useful in all situations. But Geared bikes a lot of times are going to be two, three, sometimes four times as expensive as their equivalent single speed bike. Not to mention, gear bikes do require a lot more maintenance and attention. You just have to be a little bit more careful with them. Now, some of the more recent modern gear bikes have electronic drivetrains. This means you don't have to run a shift cable ever again. Just charge the battery. That's it, bingo, bango, don't have to worry about it. But you do have to worry about the bike falling over and now your fancy expensive electric derailleurs are gonna just stop working because you hit a rock when you fell over on a gravel path and it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg to replace it versus just a mechanical drive crane. It's not going to be as easily broken and it's also going to be a lot cheaper to replace, but you still gotta replace it. Whereas a single speed bike, no derailleurs, no shift cables. It's just one less thing to go wrong, one less thing to think about, no DI2 or ETAP batteries to charge, no shift cables to go out of whack either. A single speed bikes make great training bikes. If you're just going for one or maximum two hour rides a couple times after work during the week in the summertime, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck and build strength a lot faster riding a single speed bike up a hill than riding a geared bike up a hill. Riding a geared bike up a hill, just throw it in low gear and spin up almost like you're on a roller coaster, just your legs are spinning like that. It's a great aerobic workout, whereas riding a single speed, you're going to have to just push and your legs have no choice but to get stronger. So if you only have a limited amount of time, you could actually get faster and stronger in a much shorter amount of time or with a lot less miles per week than on a geared bike. So single speed bikes are amazing bicycles to own and to ride. They're lightweight, affordable, and overall require little to no maintenance to run properly. And now that you watch this video, you'll be able to climb up hills with your single speed with ease and give it just a little bit of time. You'll be flying up those hills with no gears to help you. Thanks for watching.